Welcome to episode 29 of the Self-Care 101 podcast with your host, Pooja K. McClymont, helping people achieve their full potential with effective self-care through wellbeing coaching. Thank you so much for listening today. In this episode, I'm going to talk about how to cope with the anxiety of being alone, specifically if you're not happy or thriving being alone. Under normal circumstances, we would be able to manage anxiety a lot better as we could basically distract ourselves from difficult thoughts through various different activities. But right now, it will be exacerbated and it's important to know how to work through these thoughts so that you can manage them better and have control of any negative thinking spirals. I've got some science and some tips at the end to help make this a constructive show. So let's get to it. In 2019, the Office of National Statistics reported that over 50% of the UK population was unmarried. Now, this data comprises those living alone from the age of 16, where the majority is actually made up of people over 45 years old. However, say we remove 10% from this statistic, that's still a great number of people who are living alone, but out of a possible 8 million. So I reckon it's fair to say that that's quite a lot. Being alone and being lonely are two different things. John Cacioppo, who died in early 2018, served as the director of the Center of Cognitive and Social Neuroscience at the University of Chicago. I've talked about John before in a previous episode and his book that was published in 2006 called Loneliness is considered to be one of the most comprehensive books on the subject. If you follow me on social media, you might have seen a post last week about how I prescribe in inverted commas books to my clients to read loneliness is one of the books that I I prescribe so if you're interested in learning more from a more scientific place download it (laughs) now in his book Cacioppo explained that being alone and being lonely are not the same thing but they're both stigmatized in our society which is very very true people who prefer solitude nevertheless look for relationships out of guilt but feel even guiltier once they're in one because they basically prefer to be alone a happy single person is just as healthy as a happy married person Now, feeling lonely is what exacerbates anxiety and therefore overthinking. When we feel lonely, our thoughts can easily run away with us, causing an inevitable downward spiral of harmful thoughts. Now, primarily, these thoughts are perpetuated by thinking that the grass is greener. So you're comparing a single person's home life to that of someone in a couple or a family. But there are a number of people who are lonely in relationships and families as well. If we just use Cacioppo's theory, it's those who are unsatisfied with being alone that would benefit from learning how to be alone without feeling as though they are being deprived of relationships. It's all too easy to get caught up in assuming that being married or in a couple is the better place to be than being alone. But if you're able to cope with your life alone and find joy in your everyday, this does get easier. There's a societal fictional picture given to us from a young age that is perpetuated by the media. We all know this. It's the one about having the perfect family equals happiness. But if we look at positive psychology and well-being in general, life is actually about learning who we are and how to be with ourselves outside of others, yet still being able to thrive as a result of meaningful relationships. Now, something I want to talk about here about meaningful relationships. This is not reserved for romantic relationships, just relationships. When we don't see our family and friendships as meaningful connections, we're reducing the benefits of them. And instead, we're striving for an unrealistic expectation of what a romantic relationship can bring. I'm going to be quite controversial here, but I completely agree with that. I personally, I'm going to use a personal example, it's a lot easier. I personally had the expectation of my relationship with my partner basically solving all my problems, but actually it didn't. All it actually did was highlight the problems that I had that I needed to sort out. So I think that's quite an interesting point. 
Now, it's not to say that romantic relationships can't provide meaningful connection. Of course they can. (laughs) The point is to illustrate that putting all of our eggs in one basket by putting romantic relationships on a pedestal for relationships is what causes the harm to our mental well-being. And that's what creates an unhealthy cycle of what if. What if I had a boyfriend? What if I had a girlfriend? What if I was married right now and if I had children and oh all of that having expectations or assumptions that being in a romantic relationship will solve all of our problems it's a common feeling amongst those who are lonely so be aware of having those expectations now if you find yourself in this camp of loneliness and you struggle with getting perspective on your situation I've put together a few tips to help you when anxiety flares You do not have to be satisfied with being alone if that is not what you truly want. If you do want to have a meaningful romantic connection with someone, there's an opportunity here to reflect and redirect your thoughts to help you not only manage your mental well-being more efficiently, but to also open yourself up to your desires. So the first thing you can do is get clear, clarity. What do you want? Do you know what it is you truly want for yourself? Do you know what that looks like? How can you achieve this for yourself? What barriers are holding you back from achieving this? What can you change to make it happen? All too often we'll say something like, I want to be in a relationship and that being in a relationship will fix, well, just insert all your problems. (laughs) that we haven't been able to fix ourselves. What we're usually looking for in a relationship is to fill a void that actually resides within us. We're looking to treat the symptoms of our dis-ease with our own being, with that of having a partner. But when we do this, we actually end up creating problematic relationships because we never really know who we are and what we truly want. Wanting to be in a relationship to grow within companionship is different. Your motives for being in a relationship need to be defined. How many of us actually define why we want to be in a relationship? We don't, do we? We just assume that I should be in a relationship and by this point in time in my life, I should have my long-term partner and we will then shack up together and we will look at having kids and all the rest of it. But do we actually define what we want from a relationship? Do we even know what that is? Then I'd ask you to look at reflection. When do your thoughts start to spiral? Have you ever written your thoughts down and then reflected on them? Now you reflect on them after the fact. So say say it's Tuesday, you're having a overthinking day and you write down your thoughts. The time to then reflect is a couple of days later when you're not feeling so sad. And how often do you take stock of your thoughts and feelings and work to change them? How can you change the way you feel about yourself? See, whether you're single or in a relationship, you will need to learn how to do this for yourself. When you bring another person into the mix, if you don't know who you are and what triggers you and how to manage this, it will cause dysfunction between you and your partner. Effective communication starts with knowing yourself and knowing how you manage yourself first. You cannot change another person, but you can make the changes necessary about yourself to have a better connection with someone. And the third part of this would be direction. Are you the victim or are you a survivor? How determined are you to get what you want from life? Are you willing to make the changes necessary? Now, making the changes doesn't mean that you have to change who you are. It means to change your behavior towards yourself. So if you feel like a victim, you will perpetuate negative thinking and kind of enjoy being in this state of mind, which will eventually lead to depression. Or you can feel your thoughts and look at ways to make yourself feel better about the way you're actually feeling. A final thought about meaningful connections. Psychologists Roy Baumeister and Mark Leary argue that the need to belong is a fundamental human need to form and maintain at least a minimum amount of lasting positive and significant interpersonal relationships. 
Satisfying this need requires A, frequent positive interactions with the same individuals, and B, engaging in these interactions within a framework of long-term stable care and concern. So if you feel as though your life would be better if you were in a relationship, you're not wrong, actually, you're not wrong. But if you apply the above, if you apply what I've just said to relationships that are friendships and family relationships, you could actually have what you've been looking for. Wanting to be in a romantic relationship is also not wrong. You just need to understand yourself a little better, understand your self-identity, build your self-esteem and create meaningful connections with those who are already available to you first. Remember not to expect a relationship to fix your problems. You've got to do that for yourself. Thank you for listening to the Self Care 101 podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, I would love it if you would subscribe, rate and review so that other people like you can find the show. For more tips and tricks, you can follow me on the socials at Frankly Coaching or visit my website to find out more about my coaching programs and how to work with me at franklycoaching.com. Talk to you soon.